so good evening everyone and uh, welcome to a brand new day with a brand new topic and the brand new topic is newton laws of motion everyone understands this newton laws of motion yes or no yes sir so without wasting any time i think you know most of the things about this we will uh, <clears throat> straight away move on to the definition of thing what do you understand by force let us first uh, move on to that topic uh, straight away what do you mean by force everyone knows this right yes what is what do you understand by force tell me fatah but you don't have to write it you just have to understand it okay because i know that you already know what is force so we are we are not going to waste any time in uh, understanding what is a force what is a force bacha mass into acceleration a force uh, you might have heard is a push or a pull yes or no force is a push or a pull that uh, oops this is too right a force is a push or a pull uh, which changes or tends to change the state of rest or state of uniform motion or it changes the size shape shape or the structure or, or the orientation of the object do we understand this the force can do any of these things either it can if you push something it will change the state of its rest or motion or it can change the size or shape of a body do we understand this yes sir now the better way of uh, understanding force is that it is interaction between the object and its surrounding that is a better way of understanding force it is what it is what interaction of a body with its surrounding do we understand this yes sir now as soon as we understand that force is an interaction as soon as we understand that force is an interaction you must understand that to have force we must have at least two objects or two bodies either one could be a body the other could be a surrounding but there must be two things for force to exist a single body a single point mass a single charge cannot exert force on itself it must be exerted by someone else therefore force is an interaction between two bodies or two objects or between an object and its surrounding do we understand this yes sir everyone understands this si newton uh, si newton si unit of force is don't know that yes. si unit of force is newton newton sir SI unit of force is newton do you all understand this and the dimension of force is mlt minus 2 we all of us understand this yes or no yes sir what type of quantity is force vector that means whenever we talk about force we must think of two things the first thing is the magnitude and direction the, the next thing is the direction do you all understand this yes or no yes sir what can a force do you don't have to write it just see what can be the effect of force on a body the effect of force on a body is all of these it can either change the uh, it, it can only change the speed when i say speed i mean the magnitude of velocity that is number 1 it can change the magnitude of velocity number 2 it can change the direction of velocity number 3 it can change the size or shape or it can change both the magnitude of velocity as well as the direction of velocity do we understand this yes sir are you one understand this force no one has any doubt on this what does a force do what can a force do yes or no yes sir okay that is great now <clears throat> once we are dealing with this force at first we are going to deal with uh, up till now that is what we have been dealing with and we will continue dealing with uh, these objects these objects are known as 
these objects are known as point masses up till uh, until the chapter on uh, rotation or rigid bodies everything that we deal with will be known as a point object do you understand what is a point object or a point mass a uh, point object or a point mass whatever bodies we are dealing with at present whether it's a car or a bus or a train we are going to deal or we are going to take them as point masses do we understand this we are going to take them as point masses because their dimensions are small compared to the distances they are going to cover and you know whatever is happening so we are going to take them as point masses to begin with so when i say a body of mass m you don't have to draw the actual body and the actual dimension of the body you can simply draw them as a point or you can draw them as a block like this this block is also treated as a point mass do we understand this yes sir yes or no yes sir so we are going to deal with point masses only unless we get into the chapter of rotation or rigid bodies okay now having said that the first thing that uh, you must understand is inertia everyone understands inertia yes sir okay if you understand inertia then you must also understand newton's first law of motion or the law of inertia yes or no yes sir what is that law newton's first law of motion or the law of inertia let us first try to understand uh, yes tell me you know this every body is in rest or uniform motion until an external force is applied every body will continue to remain in its state of rest or in its state of motion unless and until an external force acts on it this property of the body is known as inertia and this law is known as newton's first law of motion or law of inertia we all understand this yes sir the first point about this this is an inherent property of all the bodies almost all bodies which exist physically they have mass they can be body which do not have mass a photon does not have a mass but that that we don't treat as a, as a physical body okay now how do you measure the inertia of a body there are two things that we are going to deal with one thing that we are going to deal with is inertia the second thing we are going to deal is moment of inertia do you understand the difference between them this moment of inertia will come in the chapter on rotation have you heard this term moment of inertia yes sir so inertia now right now we are going to understand inertia after some time we are going to understand moment of inertia inertia is a property by which the body cannot change a state of rest or state of uniform motion now whenever we are talking about this motion which is controlled by inertia which is it is trying not to change this type of motion is known as translational motion do you understand the meaning of translational and rotational motion yes or no yes sir so to be very specific inertia is the property of a body by virtue of which it resists any change in its translational motion the body is kept like this and i want to change the translational motion of the body the property that resists it is known as inertia if you understand it in this way then you can understand the next point which is moment of inertia what would be moment of inertia i hope you would have heard this term moment of inertia now i have defined inertia in a different way in a way which probably you might not have heard inertia is a property by virtue of which a body continues or it opposes any change in its translational motion on similar terms i can define moment of inertia can you tell me what will be the meaning or what is the definition of moment of inertia have you heard that term moment of inertia yes or no if you have not heard that term the question does not arise first of all have you heard that term moment of inertia yes sir we heard about 
Now, can you tell me what is moment of inertia? Remember, there are no right answers and there are no wrong answers. I just want what you understand by it. If you don't understand anything, you can say, sir, we don't understand anything. There is no shame in saying that we don't understand it. If someone asks me, sir, please explain quantum physics, I will say, sir, I don't understand it. I don't know what is quantum physics, so I can't tell you what is quantum physics. That is a fact, and I have to accept it. So if you know moment of inertia, tell me, else say that we don't know. Yes. Do you know moment of inertia? No? No, sir. Okay. Not a problem if you don't know. It's not a problem. That is not going to create a lot of problem. But since I have uh, told you, since I have told you that uh, what I'm trying to do here is get this, get this color. Okay. Huh. Yes. So what I have done here is I have told you that uh, this uh, inertia is the property which resists any change in translational motion. There are two types of motion that you might have heard about. One is translational. The other rotational. One? rotational. So what is moment of inertia? Is a property of a body by virtue of which it resists any change in its rotational any change in its rotational motion. So if I want to change the rotational motion of a body, for example, this fan, if this fan is not uh, running, uh, it is switched off, and if I try to turn it, I am trying to start the rotational motion of this fan. It will resist any change in its rotational equilibrium. That property is known as moment of inertia. Inertia depends on the mass of the body. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Moment of inertia depends on mass. It also depends on the distance of the body from the rotational axis or distance of the mass from the rotational axis. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. That is the first thing that you have to understand. Inertia. Inertia refers to translational motion. Moment of inertia refers to rotational motion. So that means every term that we have heard in translational motion, the motion that we are studying now, if you remember the first class, the motion that we are studying now is translational motion. Everything that we have heard in translational motion, it has a similar quantity in rotational motion. In translational motion, we have position vector. There we have angular position. Angular is added. In translational motion, we have displacement. In rotational motion, we have angular displacement. Hmm? Angular displacement. In translational motion, we have velocity. In rotational motion, we have angular velocity. Acceleration, angular acceleration, force, torque, momentum, angular momentum, inertia, moment, moment of, inertia. of inertia. That is how we relate things from here to here. Okay, since I have talked about, uh, since I have talked about moment of inertia and inertia, we are going to understand one more. Uh, thing uh, which is this one. As I told you, whatever we are going to study here, we are going to study again. The first thing, we have already gone through force. The first thing that we are going to do, let me do something here. Because this is creating a lot of trouble for me. Just do this. Just give me a minute. There is, there seems to be something that is troubling me. And I don't understand what is that thing. Okay. Let me correct it. Let me correct it. Give me two minutes. Just do it this way. Now let me see if things have turned better. 
place looks good okay the first thing that we are going to study we have already gone through force let us try to study the next thing which is known as linear yeah, momentum, momentum. Linear momentum is the momentum in transitional motion. It also has a cousin which is known as whatever linear momentum does here, the cousin does there. What is that cousin known as? Angular momentum. That cousin is known as angular momentum. Linear momentum is written by the letter P. It basically tells us the quantity of motion contained what is happening here? It basically tells us the quantity of motion contained in the body. Do we know this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Anyone know this? Yes, sir. Okay. What is the formula of momentum? It's a vector quantity. It is given by M multiplied by V. Yes or no? Yes, sir. What is the direction of uh, what is the direction of uh, angular? Uh, what is the direction of momentum? The direction of momentum is same as direction of velocity is the same as the direction of velocity p is equal to mv everyone knows this yes or no yes sir whenever we are talking about momentum whenever we use the word momentum we are basically referring to linear momentum and linear momentum refers to transitional motion do we understand this yes sir and here we are treating the body as a point object do we understand this Yes. So this M can be a point object, then also the momentum is MV. This M can be a bus or a truck or a train or a plane. Then also the linear momentum is M into V. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Then they can ask you a, a variety of questions on this. Uh, what is the SI unit of momentum? You must be knowing all these things, so I'll just get through it. What is SI moment uh, SI unit of uh, momentum? Kg meter per second. Kg meter per second, or you can also call it Newton meter. Yes or no? Ah, yes, sir. Newton second. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Momentum. Do we know this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, then you can also go through this graph. You may ask. Uh, they might give you a question based on graph. These are the type of questions that are asked these days. If two bodies of different masses and the same momentum, the lighter body will have more velocity. Yes or no? Do we understand this? Yes, simple, sir. Simple facts. These simple, simple facts may be put in the form of a question. And if you draw a graph between V and M, that graph would look like this. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this? Okay, then these are the other two graphs. We'll just put them graph, put this graph here. Okay, have you drawn this graph? Yes, sir. Then I'll put the other two graphs also here so that you can have a look at all the three graphs that are possible. In first graph, as you can see, the yellow one momentum is constant and your uh, Graph is drawn between V and M. In the second one, M is constant. In the third one, V is constant. So you can see three different types of graphs. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Everyone understands this? Yes, sir. Okay, then this is a time where we can again understand Newton's first law of motion. What is Newton's first law of motion? We already gone through this, yes or no? Yes, sir. But again, this is the time where we introduce it uh, officially. NLM, Newton's first law of motion, first law. What does the first law say? What does the first law say? Everybody is in rest or uniform motion until an external force is applied. And that property is known as inertia. So Newton's first law of motion is also known as law of inertia. We understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. Now this inertia, 
Uh, these are very uh, nine standard type questions. This inertia can be inertia of rest. If it is at rest, it remains at rest. This inertia can be inertia of motion, motion. or this inertia can be inertia of direction. Uh, no one is going to ask you all this. Uh, do you understand this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, this Newton's first law of motion is basically telling us that if force acting on the body is zero, then the body the mm. acceleration is zero. Do we understand this? Though we have not uh, related force with acceleration, if the body remains at rest, the acceleration is zero. If it is moving with uniform velocity, the acceleration is zero. We understand this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Basically, this F is equal to zero while a condition is known as the condition of equilibrium. So whenever you hear this term equilibrium, a body is in equilibrium, what it can mean? It can basically mean two things. What are the two things it can mean? The body is at rest or in uniform motion. Or moving with uniform velocity. Motion with uniform velocity is also known as uniform motion. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Okay. This is Newton's first law of motion. So whenever someone tells you a body is in equilibrium, you must think about the body being at rest or the body in uniform, uniform velocity. motion or motion uh, or motion with uniform velocity. Now, once we have talked about force, let us go back into that thing because now we have to understand what happens when force is zero. What happens when force is zero? The body, the body remains at rest. Yes or no? There are different types of force. The force can be classified into different ways. Let us not go into it. Then there are, uh, there are field forces. There are contact forces. We all know about this, right? Gravitational force, spring force, this force, that force. All those forces are going to come here. Let us deal with those forces one by one. And again, we are only dealing with those things that we require right now for our discussion. So the first type of force that we would understand is gravitational force. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, gravitational force is the force of attraction between any two bodies of mass. Any mass is separated by some distance. For example, if you have two bodies, M1 and M2, separated by a distance of R, they will attract each other with a force. That force is known as the gravitational force. Yes or no? Yes. And the value of this gravitational force is G. M1, M2 divided by R square, and it is always attractive in nature. Anyone understands this? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, we are going to use this gravitational force in this chapter, but not exactly in this form. What we are going to use, we are going to deal with bodies on Earth in this particular chapter. In gravitational, which we are going to study at some point in time. In the chapter on gravitation, we will be dealing with G M1, M2 by R square type forces, where we'll be dealing with forces between two stars or forces between Earth and other objects. Right now, what we are going to deal with is objects which are on Earth and which are very small compared to the mass of Earth. Yes or no? Yes, sir. In that case, those objects will be experiencing the gravitational force. So if you have a block kept like this, and the mass of the block is m. Right now, what force matters is the gravitational force of attraction between the block and the earth. And we will be taking that gravitational force of attraction as m into g, which is also known as the weight of the body. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. And this gravitational force of attraction, or mg, is going to be present everywhere in all the questions that we are going to do from now onwards. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. And it is always going to be vertically down, no matter how the object is kept. If the object is kept like this, on, on a floor which is inclined, I have seen some students draw this gravitational force perpendicular to this. Remember, it is not perpendicular. It is always going vertically downwards because 
we have also seen in the previous chapter motion under gravity that time also this gravitational force was acting and it was creating an acceleration equal to acceleration due to gravity yes or no yes sir this acceleration will be mg divided by m so it will be equal to g right now we might encounter courses uh, we will encounter cases where it will create an acceleration but it creates acceleration or not gravitational force in this chapter would always be on this object on the body and it will always be acting downwards do we understand this yes sir that is the first type of force that we must understand i hope everyone knows this i don't think uh, you are writing anything there is nothing that you have to write here right yes or no yes sir we all know this what is the second type of force that we have to deal with in this chapter we are talking about this chapter only Huh? You don't know. If only one force we will deal in this chapter. That is, yes. Frictional force, sir. Okay. What uh, are we going to? Uh, are we going to start with the chapter of friction first, or are we going to do friction after we are done with Newton's laws of motion? So why we are talking about the force that is going to come in the next chapter, literally? Why can't we talk about something that we are going to face in this chapter? is gravitational the only force we are going to face in this chapter or tell me the names of some forces that you have used that you have heard that you have solved questions on that you have seen questions on yes only gravitational force nothing else nothing else come to your mind yes nothing if nothing comes tell me there's nothing there's no if, if 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 someone tells me tell me the mass of a neutron i i don't remember i just say i don't remember i don't know for some um, yes any other force that you remember no one contact forces these forces come into the picture when two bodies are kept in contact have you heard about these forces yes contact sir. forces these forces happen when two bodies are kept in contact for example i have this body this body can be ground or it can be a table top and i have placed a block of mass m on the top of this table and let us say that this is moving with a velocity v now what happens is these two bodies since they are in contact they will interact with each other they will exert forces on each other that force between two bodies which happens because of contact between the two bodies are known as contact, contact. forces have you heard about them yes sir these forces are electromagnetic in nature do you know this they come because of electromagnetic interaction so these forces are electromagnetic in nature apart from gravitation whatever forces we see in our daily life they are electromagnetic in nature contact forces are also electromagnetic in nature so <clears throat> forces will these two bodies will exert force on each other this force is known as the contact force the other name for this contact force is reaction force r have you heard about this reaction force r it is written by the letter r reaction force have you heard about reaction force yes and this reaction force every force exists in pairs because every force is because of two bodies interacting action and reaction are equal and opposite do we understand this yes sir this r that i have drawn is force applied by which body on which body this r that i have drawn is the force applied by which body on which body this is body number 1 let us say this is body number 1 and this is body number 2 this r is the force applied by which body on which body 
one on two. Force applied by body one on two, sir. This R is a force applied by body two on body one. This is the force applied by body two on body one. And if I draw this one, this one would be the force. This one would be the force applied by one on two. body one on body two. They are equal and opposite. Forces always exist in pairs. This is known as a reaction force. Now, this reaction force can be can be divided or can be split into two components. One component like this and one component like this. What is the blue component known as? Normal. The blue component is known as N, and this N is known as the normal contact force. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Normal contact or normal reaction force. It is known as normal because it is perpendicular. Then what is this green one known as? Friction, sir. This green one is known as the frictional force. This green one is known as the frictional force. So basically, this normal contact force is the mother force. Newton, uh, normal. This reaction force R is the mother force, and uh, this N and F are its uh, kids. So I can write this R. As root over f square plus n square. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This r makes an angle theta with this. I can write the value of this tan theta. What is the value of this tan theta? This is always equal to f divided by n. Mm. We will deal with this f later on. But in the very first cases, we will assume that surfaces are surfaces are frictionless. If the surfaces are frictionless to begin with, F becomes equal to zero, and your reaction force becomes your normal reaction force. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This is how we start. The chapter on uh, Newton's law. We assume that the surfaces are frictionless, so that the frictional force can be neglected. And whenever you see two bodies in contact, you just have to draw one force. And which force are you going to draw? You are going to draw the normal reaction normal. or the normal contact force. And remember, it is always going to be perpendicular to the two bodies. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. This normal reaction or the normal contact force. This has to be perpendicular to the two bodies because this is how we have assumed it. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Pakka, is there any doubt on this? No, sir. Sure. Sure, sir. Okay, if I give you uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, small, uh, this small uh, question. Draw the normal forces. Let us say the ah, hmm. draw the normal forces on this body and the frictional and the and the and the and the gravitational force. Don't have to draw it. You just have to tell me how will that the diagram look. This is a rod, as you can see. If I tell you to draw the forces that I have told you, I have told you about. Uh, uh, gravitational force. I have told you about the normal contact force. How will the how will the forces look like? Can anyone tell me, or should I have to draw? I will assume that gravitational force acts on the midpoint. Yes or no? Yes, sir. 
and it will be equal to mg mg what else how the other two forces would be drawn do you know how to draw this so there will be one reaction one normal reaction coming from ground which would be perpendicular to the two one and one reaction coming from here like this so this is how the forces will look like do we understand this yes or no yes sir sure yes sir yes or no yes sir i don't see any yes from your side do we understand this yes sir okay so this was reaction force or normal reaction force whenever two bodies are kept in contact we will have to draw this force it will always be perpendicular to the two bodies and friction would be taken as zero to start off with then we will move on to the chapter where we will deal with friction wale problems as well then the third type of force that you might have heard about yes that we will use a lot in this chapter tension in a string have you heard about this yes sir tension in a string what type of force is it it is again a electromagnetic force whenever you hang anything by a string this force comes because of electromagnetic interaction between the string and uh, between the string and the body yes or no yes sir now whenever we talk about tension it is an electromagnetic force there are certain points that you must remember about tension and string so we will note them down like this important point about important point about strings and tension in a string point number 1 all strings are taken as massless all strings are taken as massless there would be questions where we will have uh, strings with masses but unless such a question comes we'll assume that uh, all the strings are massless do we understand this yes sir. there could be question where the string will have mass but then that becomes a special question otherwise whenever you see a string attached to anything that string would be taken as massless and the strings are inextensible that means whenever you hang anything by a string even though it extends by a very small amount we will neglect it and we will take this thing as uh, inextensible if you put both of these uh, things together we can write them in a single sentence we call strings are ideal whenever i talk about an ideal string what do i actually mean is that the string is string is massless and in inextensible strings are massless and strings are inextensible do we understand this yes sir now since strings are massless tension remains same throughout the string throughout the string tension remains same from where this point comes this point comes mass. from this point if the if the if the mass if the string has mass the tension would be different at different points do we understand this yes sir the tension in the string remains same tension can only pull
and can't push. Uh, strings, uh, instead of tension, you can write strings can only pull. Strings can only pull and can't push. Therefore, tension would be such that it will always try to pull the object. Tension of a string cannot push the object. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. For example, if I have a string and a mass attached to the string M, and I tell you what will be the direction of force on the mass M, this mass is attached to the string, this string is going to pull it. So what will be the direction of tension on the mass? The direction of tension on the mass would be upwards. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Because string cannot push string can only pull do we understand this yes sir if i have this mass and now let us say i attach it by strings like this three strings like this now if i tell you what will be the tensions so now this one will try to pull it like here t1 this will will try to pull it like here t2 this will try to pull it like here t3 do we understand this yes sir strings can only pull Pull. They cannot push. String cannot be used to push objects. If I have a block like this, M1, and if I have a block like this, M2, and if I ask you what is the direction of tensions, so this string will pull it, and this string will also pull it. Strings can only pull, and strings cannot push. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Remember this. Important points, these important points will help you in solving some difficult question. Strings are always taut or tight. We will definitely encounter questions where the string would be cut or string becomes loose. But in most of the cases, string will always remain time. Tight, that means tension in the string cannot be taken as zero. It will not be zero. If string becomes loose, if strings are loose, or strings are cut, then the tension in the string becomes zero. So unless otherwise stated, Strings will not become loose, they will not extend, they can only pull. Tension in the string always remains constant. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Unless and until obviously the string has a mass. We will add some important points about pulleys. Here also. Pulleys, unless otherwise stated, are massless. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Pulleys are smooth when i say smooth that means they are frictionless do we understand this yes sir instead of saying these two things i can say pulleys are ideal an ideal pulley implies these two things Pulleys are massless and pulleys are uh, Fric frictionless. frictionless. These are what I mean by ideal pulleys. Now, pulleys are frictionless, therefore tension on both sides of the pulley will remain same. same. Why does this happen? Because the pulleys are frictionless. 
the string or rope slides on the pulley do we understand this you will just slide on the pulley why does it happen because they are frictionless the pulley cannot rotate pulley doesn't rotate why does this happen same thing there is no friction the rope will just slide pulley will just rotate then what will pulley do what is the purpose of putting a pulley pulley is just there pulley just changes the direction of motion of the two connected bodies i hope you are writing this because you may forget some of these points i'll give you 2 minutes to uh, catch up Two minutes to everyone is noted this down. Yes, sir. Okay. Then we move on to important points about. Important points about bodies connected to strings and pulleys. Important points about bodies which are connected with a string or a pulley. <clears throat> Two bodies connected. by a single string one string will always have same see what i'm writing here what do you understand by this tell me will have same displacement velocity and acceleration no magnitude of i mean like magnitude of velocity and acceleration everything i do i do it for a reason i put this dabba this do danda this do danda is for the magnitude why i have written magnitude here try to understand it with an example let us suppose i have two bodies m1 and m2 attached like this by a single string now it is very easy to understand that if this body moves with a velocity v vector this body also moves in the same direction with the same velocity yes or no because they are connected by the same string string cannot extend so whatever is the movement of body 2 the same is the the same has to be the movement of body 1 yes or no yes sir so why i have written modulus here the velocity acceleration displacement all are going to be same why i have written modulus why i have written magnitude of that i should have written displacement velocity and acceleration are same why i have written magnitude only because this is just one case in which all of them are same now if i change the case and i make the case a bit different now you will understand why i have written the magnitude of displacement now if i put the 
blocks like this same block but but watching uh, but uh, but uh, passing over a pulley remember what does a pulley do what does a pulley do pulley it just pulley. changes the direction of motion you can see the direction of motion has been changed by the pulley previously both of them were moving in the same way yes or no yes sir but now you see where are they moving this one is still moving like this but this probably is going to go down like this and this is possible how this is possible because of this gentleman do we understand this yes sir now if you look at this if this body moves down with a velocity v magnitude wise this body does not move with the same velocity yes but the magnitude of velocity is same do we understand this yes sir and that is why i have written not the vectors but the magnitude of magnitude. vectors two bodies which are connected by a single string will have the same magnitudes of velocity remember but they must be connected by a single, single string. string they must be connected by a single string then they will have same magnitude of velocity same magnitude of acceleration but their direction of motions can be different do we understand this yes sir. so you can add their as their as their directions of motion can be different that is why i have used only the magnitude sign do we understand this yes or no yes sir okay now what will happen if bodies are connected not by one but by multiple strings what will happen if the bodies are connected by multiple strings if bodies are connected by multiple strings if two or more bodies are if two or more bodies are connected by multiple strings if two or more bodies are connected by multiple strings then their displacements ka magnitude velocity ka magnitude and acceleration ka magnitude would be related to each other would be different but related to each other they would be related to each other in some matter in some way okay do we understand this yes sir this type of relation is known as spring constraint they are constrained to move because they are attached to each other by strings do we understand this yes sir this is known as your string constraint okay now i hope you have written this yes sir done now you can also write this thing <coughs> since <coughs> pulleys are massless they do not have any mass we are considering that they do not have any mass mass is zero that implies the net force on any pulley is always going to be taken as zero unless and until they have a mass now that is an imp important implication because this implication can give us some very important results for example if i have a pulley like this 
and it is attached to two blocks m1 and m2 if i look at what is the force acting on the pulley this is tension t1 this is tension t1 why i am writing two t1 and this is tension t2 remember the net force acting on the pulley will also will always be zero why because we have assumed that pulleys are massless so the net force acting on the pulley will be will be zero here you see t2 is acting upwards and 2t1 is acting downwards therefore i can write t2 will be equal to equal to 2t1 2t1 so this equation comes it only comes because pulleys are treated as massless even though the pulleys are getting accelerated they might have acceleration but since they are taken as massless this equation that the net force is zero will always be valid because it comes from them being massless f is equal to m into a if m is zero even though they have acceleration the mass is the, the mass is zero so the net force becomes zero, zero. do you understand this yes, yes or no yes sir these are the things that you must remember about uh, pulley strings and masses and you must also remember newton's third law of motion because we will be encountering forces and forces always exist in pair so what is newton's third law of motion so you must also remember this to solve any question to solve any question you must remember newton's third law of motion and what is that every action has equal and opposite reaction every action has a equal and opposite reaction now to begin with uh, this chapter on newton's laws of motion you have to understand the first thing about this chapter and the first thing about this chapter is and the most important thing about this chapter is and this will continue from this chapter onwards yes what is the most important thing that you have to do in this chapter or any chapter that you do is to draw dike draw what free body diagram draw free body diagram free body diagrams or we call fbd free body diagrams or fbd now these fbds would be drawn using what we have learned so far we have seen three types of forces so we'll only concentrate on those three types of forces the first type of force that we have seen is gravitational force for us it will be acting in the form of weight which will always be vertically downwards yes or no yes sir the second type of force we have seen is contact force but mm -hmm. in that contact force we are only dealing with normal reaction force the normal reaction force is always normal to the two bodies yes or no two bodies yes sir that is the second force that we have to deal with the third force that we have dealt with is tension and we have written so many things about the tension yes or no yes sir so we have to deal with that force there is one more force spring force which is going to come but that will go come later on then when it comes then we only will deal with it right now we don't have to deal with this so right now we'll only concentrate on these two forces yes or no we can do that these yes. three forces right now I, this is a very small diagram what are the forces acting on it can you draw a free body diagram and tell me what are the forces on this very simple remember drawing a free body diagram is like solving 95% of the question if you draw the correct free body diagram because with a wrong free body diagram you will not go anywhere you will just land up in trouble so you have to draw a correct free body diagram the more you practice these free body diagrams the better you would be in solving any questions 
So what matters is that you draw a correct free body diagram and have you drawn the free body diagram? There are only two things that you see, yes or no? The first okay. thing is the weight of this body mass is not given. Let us take it as mg. The second one would be the normal, normal reaction. And we are done. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm looking if I can get more diagrams where you have to draw free body diagram. That is what I'm looking so that I don't have to. I don't have to draw them on my own. I don't see them, so I'll draw on my own. And uh, this is the next one. Let us say I have a surface, plain surface. I have three bodies. M1, M2, M3. And I apply a force F on this. Can you draw the three body diagrams of M1, M2, and M3? I'll give you two minutes. So how do you draw the free body diagram? You, take, you just isolate body one, M1, it's kept on ground. What are the forces here? M1, G downward, yes or no? Yes, sir. Normal, Normal reaction, force. N1 like here. Force F is from here, I can just draw it like this, yes or no? Yes, sir. Is there any other force acting on it? That's it, sir. Base force acting on it. This body and this body are in contact. So they exert forces on each other. This body will exert force on this. Let me call this force as R1. R1. Okay. So what is this R1? This R1 is the force exerted by M2 on M1. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. Then let us draw the free body diagram of M2. How does the free body diagram of M2 look like? M2G. M2G is downwards. Normal is Normal is purple. It has to be different. N2. Is there any other force acting on it? Yes, sir. What? Uh, on R2. R2. Remember this R1 and R2 are the action and reaction forces. R2 or R1? Uh, no, no. This one would be R1, action and reaction force that I've written R2 in uh, one word thing. Is there any other force still acting on this block? Mm. There's one more force acting on this block which is R2, this R2 is applied by? M3. M3 on this. So now I move and draw the free body diagram of the third block. M3G downwards. M3G. M3, M3, is there any other force? And, uh, there would be this force R2 which is coming from M2. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. So this is how you will have to draw free body diagrams of uh, all the questions that you see. Do you have a module with you? Module of Newton's, we don't have, sir. Did you get any module up till now? No, sir. Okay. Do you have any books with you that Yes, sir. We have some books. Which books? In the oh, library. College. You have? So, yes, sir. whatever books you see in the chapter on Newton's laws of motion, you will see some questions. What you got to do is to draw a free body diagram of those questions. Can you do that? Yes, sir. The more you practice, the more, the better you will become. So, I'll end this class here on this free body diagram. We only have to think about three forces right now. One is the gravitational force Mg, which is going to act downwards always. The other one is the normal reaction normal force, which reaction. is always going to act perpendicular. This will always come 
wherever there is a contact between two bodies here there is a contact between two bodies here there is a contact between two bodies and therefore there are two forces do we understand this yes sir here there is a contact between the two bodies here there is a contact between the two bodies therefore there are two forces remember whenever there is contact normal reaction force and friction will come friction we are not dealing with so we have just let friction we will deal with it when we grow uh, when we go ahead so i'll end this class here the next class will begin from here i will not be doing free body diagrams anymore because i think you can do it on your own yes or no yes, tomorrow sir. is a holiday for you so you can practice free body diagrams do as many free body diagrams as possible i'll do one or two free body diagrams when i come to the class in the next class and then we'll move on to solve some questions remember time is a luxury that we don't have and we have to cover i was just making you a uh, schedule and even if i go at the speed of knots and with the speed of light i would still be just able to cover your course i was just drawing this i was just trying to see how many topics are there and when i am going to finish when is your je going to be and there's a long list of topics from year to year Yes, even if i go at the speed of light it will take a lot of time is uh, because your 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 course is in a galaxy far 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 away even with the speed of light it might take millions of years anyways i'll try to do my best so you have to okay. do your part so that i can spend more time in doing things which are to be done in the class and less time which you can do on your own do you understand this yes so in free body diagrams i'll be wasting 30 minutes of the class in that which i don't want to do okay okay sir sir do we have know? exam tomorrow i think so yes okay sir we will have exam tomorrow okay so thank you sir take care and i'll see you if you have any doubts please ask bye bye thank you sir